I would like to express this is my this is firstly my admiration about about the great men uh, Nelson Mandela. You're an example to us all of perseverance, forgiveness, strength, wisdom and grace. We have all equally been awed by his dedication to others and by his inspiration to serve as he did, working to build a more just and peaceful world. Nelson Mandela is the symbol of what humankind must strive for, peace, brotherhood, and a common goal to better every life on this planet. Our work here on the International Space Station mirrors exactly what Mr. Mandela spent his life trying to accomplish. And that was part of a video released by the Nelson Mandela Center in tribute to Mr. Mandela on this his 95th birthday. Washington also paid tribute to the former South African president today. California Congresswoman Maxine Waters, members of the Congressional Black Caucus, and House and Senate leaders held a ceremony on Capitol Hill to celebrate Mr. Mandela's life. In the 1980s, Congresswoman Waters was a leading voice advocating for divestment from South Africa's apartheid regime. The Congresswoman joins us now on Capitol Hill. Congresswoman Waters, welcome to Bottom Line. Thank you for joining us today. You're so welcome. I'm so pleased that you're uh, covering Nelson Mandela's birthday celebrations today. Well, as we all are, ma'am, take us back to the 1980s. There was some pushback from American corporations and businesses who didn't want to divest from South Africa, and the Reagan administration initially wasn't on board either. How were you and others able to convince business leaders and the White House that the moral imperative superseded their bottom line? We were not able to convince them. We forced them through uh, putting uh, an economic hurt on them. Literally, the divestment bills and the sanctions bill from Congress put them in a very precarious position, and their profits were threatened. And so it was only when we were able uh, to hurt them economically did they begin to fold. And so that's what the divestment movement was all about. We said to those companies that were doing business in South Africa, you're supporting apartheid. As long as you stay there and you accept their practices and you work their workers in the fashion that they would have you work them with little or no money, uh, no lunch times, no restrooms, all of that, then you're yeah. a part of the problem. And so yeah. we were not able to simply convince them, but we absolutely put together a strategy that economically imperiled them. Uh, Congresswoman, there was some concern that American businesses would suffer if they stopped doing business in South Africa. And during the 80s, South Africa was a big player in the commodities market, at that time holding about 30 to 50 percent of the world's gold supply. Do you recall which businesses stepped up first and said, we just don't want the money that badly that the government sanctioned system in South Africa at the time was corrupt and racist and they wanted no part of it? Well, what happened was uh, some of the American firms tried an alternative. Uh, if you can remember, there was Reverend Leon Sullivan, Sullivan and they came up with the seven Sullivan principles. Those principles were designed to say that these American firms are going to act better in South Africa. We're not going to do all of what we've been doing in the past. We're going to have some lunch rooms. We're going to have some toilet facilities. But we opposed the Sullivan principles. They were not good enough. We thought it was just simply um, a way by which uh, to make us feel better sure. about their being there and so we continued to oppose them and then I think GE and some of the others uh, began to change their mind. I think Johnson yeah. & Johnson was one of them. We put a lot of pressure on Shell Oil and so they started to fold. What, what was the turning point? When did the boycotts and the sit-ins and the arrest finally strike a chord with the public? I know you were arrested on a couple of occasions. Yes, I was arrested along with others in the Free South Africa movement. Randall Robinson uh, was the head of a group called Trans Africa, and he led the organizing of the Free South Africa movement out of Washington, D.C. Walter Fontroy, Eleanor Holmes Norton, uh, and the labor leaders 
all got together and started the arrest strategy. And so we travel across the country. We would come and we would protest and sit in. And so we would get arrested, but we would keep going back and back again. And so this brought a lot of attention uh, to what was going on in South Africa, got a lot of the legislators involved for the first time in understanding what was going on in South Africa. Right. Many of those countries in Africa were beginning to, uh, you know, get independence. And, yes. But South Africa was the last, but we really had to work very hard uh, to get them uh, going uh, to... Yeah you know, basically give freedom to black well, South Africans. Well, you've been privileged to meet Mr. Mandela. You were also part of the delegation yes. that attended his inauguration as president. What yes. did that mean for you personally to meet the man and to witness history? I have to tell you, it was a defining moment in my life to be at that inauguration. Uh, first of all, uh, I was in awe at the formations that were being flown over the inauguration by the military. This was the military that had enforced apartheid, and now they were honoring this black South African who was now president. He was a warm and very kind man. He even told jokes. Uh, I never really saw him angry, but I could feel his strength. Of course, mm -hmm. I admired him so very, very much, got to know him very well, and right. finally, when I finally uh, repealed the uh, divestment bill that I had introduced, it was only when he called mm -hmm. me, and I got this call late in tonight, in the night, when he said, it's time, because I was resisting the repeal. Right. Congresswoman, we have about 30 seconds left. I have to ask, yes. your congressional district includes South Central LA. LA. What yes. do you tell your constituents, particularly young African American men, about Mandela's life, his values, his integrity, and how those things can chart a course in their lives as well? Well, of course, uh, we tried to involve a lot of young people uh, when we were putting together the event that welcomed him to Los Angeles. We had uh, almost 90,000 people who came to the Coliseum, and we'd gotten a lot of the young people to work. They admired him because they liked the strength, the commitment, uh, the sacrifice that he was making. And we always reminded them, if he can spend 27 years in prison at Robben Island and make that kind of sacrifice, you have to. Uh, show what you can do by taking responsibility, first of all, to be a good person yourself, but to reach out and fight for justice, equality, and freedom.